are joined together in the marriage in my presence and in the presence of these witnesses, I am bound to remind you of the solemn and binding now, nature Joshua, of Ryan, the relationship Murphy, into which you're Will you take enter. Asia, Nina, Bindoff, Stewart to be your lawful wedded wife? Will you love and cherish her through the good times and bad times for the rest of your lives together? I do. Asia, Nina, Bindoff, Stewart, will you take Joshua, Ryan Murphy to be your lawful wedded husband. <laughs> Will you love and cherish him through good times and bad times for the rest of your lives together? I do. Will. Now these are the hands of your best friend, strong and full of love for you. They are holding yours on your wedding day as you promise to love each other today, tomorrow, and forever. These are the hands that will work alongside yours as together you build your future. These are the hands that will passionately love you and hug you through the years and with the slightest touch will comfort you like no other. These are the hands that will hold and comfort your baby and any other children you may be blessed with. <laughs> These are the hands that will wipe the tears from your eyes, tears of sorrow and tears of joy, the hands that will give you strength when you need it. And lastly, these are the hands that even when wrinkled and aged will still be holding for yours, giving you the same unspoken tenderness with just a touch. Asia, I choose you above all others. Asia, I choose you above all others. As my wife, to share my life always. As my wife, to share it always. To share my life always. To share my life. To share my life with you always. Take this ring. Take this ring. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. I don't have the ring. <laughs> what ring? What ring? Okay. Josh, I choose you. Josh, I choose you. Above all others. Above all others. As my husband. As my husband. To share my life. To share my life. Take this ring. Take this ring. As a token of my love. It is with great pleasure that I now declare you to be husband and wife. Would you like to seal your union with a kiss? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yay. 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 The first person I need to thank is Gretchen. Miss Gretchen, for providing two beautiful children, Asia and, of course, Angus. So the ego, okay, we're having it away, and we're having it, when are we having it? We're having it in 10 days. Okay, right. And suddenly there's this voice on the phone saying, hi, I'm Emily. You go, What's an Emily? Okay. Uh, great. I will help you with the wedding. I don't need any help with the wedding. What is the problem here? Okay, so anyway, by the next morning, there was an email about, I don't know, five pages long. <laughs> so this is what you can do, and when you get through with that, you can do this. So thank you. And to me, Ness. Kimmy? Yes. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Well done. Thank you guys. No girls. <laughs> so that was fantastic. I also have to thank Lee, who really, really, really started quite a lot of this mess. <laughs> <laughs> now Lee and I go back a long way, and there's been a, little, a, a bit of water under the bridge. He's just going to be rude. <laughs> and really, you know, as the oldest man in the room, he should be taking responsibility for this. Conscripted one day when I told him that really you guys need to get a present for Finbar. And Finbar was about three, and they're looking at me like, well, we haven't got the money, I've got money for dope. So, <laughs> and so, and, and I said, yeah, and I said, look, you need to get 
a person feel cousin. And look, kind of goes. And unfortunately, you know, he kind of took it on board. And you know, cousin Loki eats with us. And you know, as much as he might like to get out, unfortunately, he's with us. So okay, and of course, then there's the silent organizer from the back of the bus. I had nothing to do with this wedding. I have to thank my wife. Beachy <laughs> over here, who's now blushing. <laughs> she ran off. And, uh, you know, she actually, yeah. as usual, kicked at us. Yeah. And everybody who came to this small, exclusive gathering, place. <laughs> everybody who came. Okay, so, and our aerial friend here, Arrow. Check it out. She's trying to make things fly since she got in the room. <laughs> Bit of a kindred spirit with Lee. Yes. Who is currently building, what? for those of you who know, a Zeppelin. Yes. So, you know, you may think you're pretty hot. This guy's building a Zeppelin. Which brings me to Josh. <laughs> so now, Josh. I'm going out with this guy. I'm not sure about this guy.
for me is that you really care about each other yeah. and look out for each other. And um, what else? <laughs> <laughs> Good time to hit. Yeah, I can think of thousands of stories about Asia. Okay, we're on the fame, redhead fame story. Um, Patrick White, I don't know if anybody knows who he is these days. He's a very, very famous writer, Australian writer, who's been dead a few years now. But he loved Asia, and every time we walked in Centennial Park, he would be there in his old age, because he lived just over the park. And he always used to stop me so he could talk to Asia. He didn't want to talk to me. <laughs> it was just Asia. She magnetised him. Sam Neill was another one, the actor. <laughs> and another one was um, Brad Whiteley, who used to befriend Asia on uh, the beach at, um, where is it? The Bay? Nielsen Park. Nielsen Park. Yeah, because he had red hair and she'd go and sit on the edge of the water. And and he would, if he was there, would go and sit with her and they'd play, play yeah, sand yeah. castles. <laughs> Not me, he was always Asian. <laughs> so the red hair was a magnet for interesting, strange old men. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Oh, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 